Right, we made it to the little town of Railston. Now, I don't know whether you can see the sign across there, but yeah, Sheffield's only 11 k's from here. Latrobe 15, Sprayton's 18, and back at Devonport where we came from is only 24. So trust me, everything's within a stone's throw here at the moment. Um, here in Railton, very, very large streets. Not this particular one, but the one I'll walk you out on. But anybody would think the streets are large enough to race elephants. Well, apparently, according to that mural, way back in 1950, a circus was in town on a regular basis, and one day they decided to race elephants. So, what better place to race an elephant in a very large street, Railton. Um, the street was obviously very large for the bullet trains way back then, um, hauling the logs and bits and pieces. So a modern day twist on the town now is topiary, I think they call it. It's the art of sculpturing the trees. So uh, there's some really pretty, pretty designs around here, some uh, pretty talented um, gardener about. So uh, I'm passing one beautiful little sample there. And he's also gone and dressed some of them up. There has been elephants. I think this is an elephant. Hasn't quite formed his trunk yet, but uh, let's see if we've got a bit of a shot there. It just needs a bit more in the tusks, but I have got a photo of a pretty neat little elephant up the other end. So yeah, there we have it. We'll throw a few more photos of the, uh, the neat little uh, tree decorations. Good morning. Morning. This is our first um, real little uh, tourist, what would you call it? It's a tourist trap. <laughs> Attraction. <laughs> little tourist um, thing to have a look at. It's a um, chocolate factory. Chocolate, yum. We're into chocolates all the time, eh? Yep. What have we done now? Chocolate factories in um, well, Perth. Yep. Um, yeah, all over the place. You've seen them before. <laughs> but this one's a chocolate factory with a different. It's um, yeah, quite a arty, not a yeah, we'll find out anyway. So the house, what is it? The House of Anvers, I think they call it. You will put a little sign down the bottom. <laughs> and it was, uh, the house itself is a 1931 uh, Californian style bungalow. So uh, it goes way back and uh, was taken over by, I believe this family and they've turned it into a chocolate business. So uh, I don't think the chocolate making is available today, but uh, obviously the retail and you can come here for like Belgian waffles, Belgian breakfasts. So and we'll have a look. By the looks. Yeah, milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody come out with a milkshake. So we're going to check it out, and um, you can take some snaps and yep. see what it's all about. But there's great RV parking and caravan parking out the back. So plenty there. Alone with our shadows, steal our hearts. managed to pop into the store at the, uh, the chocolate place, the House of Chocolate in Avenir. Um, they are one, well they are the only Australian producer, I believe, of a Fortuno chocolate, which is up here on the shelf. Now, um, the cacao um, bean, or whatever it is there, was um, deemed to be extinct back in 1916 and it wasn't until about 12 or 13 years ago 
that um, it was found. So here is, I think they, they were saying that they were one of about 14 for a few years that were able to obtain this nut. Um, and it's since grown to about, they're one in about 40 now, but uh, the only one in Australia. So we've got ourselves a little sample to try this very rare chocolate. Wow, that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, highly recommended place to stop. Hey, the first uh, little tourist uh, attraction to come and have a look at, and it's um, highly recommended. It was Definitely. good. Prices were great. Service was awesome. 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 Absolutely awesome. Very friendly, full of information. And the uh, quality of the the chocolate. I mean, they give you samples, and it's not like, oh, here's one. There's a little bag there, and you get like four, five. Yeah, about four or five. Plus, oh, very changes generous. them every day. So different flavour. Yeah. What do we have? Uh, we had the whiskey. Whiskey chocolate. Yum. Mm. So uh, yeah, great start, and uh, the time is ticking. We better get a move on. Next destination. It's a busy old day here in Latrobe. Now there's a popular spot you need to come to when you're in La Trobe and uh, Jude's already there now so uh, I can't pronounce the store, I think it's <laughs> down the bottom please Jude. <laughs> we'll go and catch up and see what she's up to if I can find her. Well, I made it into the store and it's absolutely madness. People everywhere. <laughs> Obviously, Christmas time's a big time for this bloody store. But uh, I'm just in Alice in Wonderland. But there's giant creatures, animals, medievals, and everything around here. Apparently, this way to the North Pole, and we're going to go there. Gee, that was the most amazing store to go into. Shame it was so packed. I would recommend not a weekend and not a holiday. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you like your theme stuff, it's pretty damn good. Right, I managed to get out of the hustle and bustle of La Trobe. Um, now La Trobe was back in the 1820s. It was actually the main port of Northwest. I guess that's now been taken over by uh, Devonport now. But uh, yeah, got a nice bit of history going on there. And um, it was also uh, popular for a chocolate festival over Winterfest, I think it is. And uh, something about ferret racing as well. So, uh, oh, and wood chopping. So, uh, yeah, good little spot to come. Very busy on the weekend though. So, uh, really couldn't get too much filming going there. Everybody was everywhere. <laughs> and I still can't pronounce the name of that place. Uh, Re Liquir. Maybe? Was that good? <laughs> All right, we're back to the van and uh, time for our next port of call, which is actually just not far up the road. Yeehaw! My first big things in Tasmania. How good's this? It is the big platypus. They do get some giant uh, platypuses here in uh, Tasmania. Um, they uh, they age up to around about 17 years um, and they can weigh up to around about um, two kilos plus depending on the sex um, 
I'll tell a few more things as, um, well, as, as, as our travels go, but um, interesting, I, platypus don't have any teeth, so their bill has got um, quite a bit of power, so they, they crush, but they do tend to pick up a lot of, um, well, what do you call it, like um, gravel or something from the riverbed, and they use that to grind down their, um, whatever they eat, they eat um, yeah, little shrimps, little worms, little tadpoles and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, an interesting little character, lays eggs, um, it is a mammal. It's only available um, in um, parts of Australia and Tasmania. Um, and yeah, work it out. Is it part duck, part beaver, part otter? The thing's even got venom, so is it part snake? <laughs> Weird, eh? Interesting critter. So we hope to see a few in the wild um, as we travel around Tasmania. It's a good place to come when you're in La Trobe. Down the back end there, there's a Axman Hall of Fame. You come on in here and uh, check out all the old gear on how they used to run for competitions. Top of axes, top of saws, even down to their shoes that they wear for special competition. So yeah, not a bad little display. And if you're here on a weekend, catch it for a bit of a bit of a market vibe out the front. It's a very, very rare um, chocolate KO, whatever they used to go have there. Um, oh. Drop that one, bastard.